Welcome to the African History Network show right here on 910 AM, the Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. It is Tuesday, May 10th, 2022, and we are live. Calling numbers 313-778-7600 is the calling number if you have a question or comment. I hope everybody's doing well today. Um, so on today's show, I want to do an update on what's going on in Florida. I know you've heard the story about the Florida math textbooks, 54 of them, that were rejected for usage in uh, Florida K through 12 schools because it's claimed that the books teach critical race theory, which they don't. And over the past uh, three weeks, we've heard statements by Governor Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida, and we've heard these idiotic statements. So uh, we're gonna talk about this because over the past few days, more information has been released about the um, reviews of some of these books and why they were actually banned, why they were actually rejected. Um, I know back uh, April 18th, National Public Radio, NPR.org had this article, Florida rejects um, 54 math books claiming critical race theory appeared in some. Florida rejects 54 math books claiming critical race theory appears in some. Uh, in the excerpt of that article says that the uh, Florida Education Department has rejected 54 math textbooks for its K through 12 curriculum, 54 math textbooks for its K through 12 curriculum, uh, citing reasons spanning the inclusion of critical race theory to common core learning concepts. The rejected books make up a record 41% of the 132 books submitted for review. The rejected books make up 41% uh, of the 132 books submitted for review. The Florida Department of Education said in a statement. Now of them, 28 were rejected because they, quote, incorporated prohibited topics or unsolicited strategies, including critical race theory, the statement said. Now, this is from this article came out April 18, 2022. The piece from NPR goes on to say critical race theory has been described by scholars as an examination of racism and its impact through systems such as legal housing and education however it is typically not taught in k through 12 school to k through 12 schools so this is an article uh and a lot of news outlets were reporting on this this article here from national public radio from april 18th 2022 since this piece came out we know that uh, new york times has an article from uh thursday uh may 9th Okay, I'm sorry, from uh, Monday, May 9th, updated Monday, May 9th, originally came out Saturday, May 7th, Florida releases reviews that led to rejection of math textbooks. So now more information has been coming out about why some of these textbooks were rejected and they make no sense whatsoever. Also um, on May, uh, Monday, May 9th, the Washington Post has an article DeSantis accused textbooks of quote unquote indoctrination. Indoctrination. Here's what he meant. So we're going to discuss this uh, some here on today's show. Once again, this is an example of how elections have how elections have consequences, and how it's dangerous to have crazy, deranged people like Governor Ron DeSantis in power. Okay, because stupid people in power do stupid things. We're going to talk about this and then also a story that I ran out of time on our Sunday show. And uh, we had a jam packed Sunday show. So I did not get a chance to talk about this uh, history lesson, this history story. May 7th, 1955, the murder of civil rights activist, the Reverend George W. Lee, the Reverend George W. Lee, who uh, helped to 
uh, register African Americans to vote. Okay, we're going to talk about this. We talked about uh, 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 Reverend George Lee before, but we're going to talk about this story. He was in. Uh, he lived in Mississippi. All right, we know Mississippi was very dangerous for civil rights workers, especially those uh, registering people uh, to vote. So we'll talk about the Reverend uh, George Lee, who was a civil rights activist who was uh, killed, he was murdered, May 7th, 1955. Now, on the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now it's correct your own behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. Uh, be sure to visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can register for the online history classes I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. And also we have uh, the new documentary, uh, out of Darkness, uh, from the Out of Darkness series, Heavy is the Crown, which deals with the African origins of the major religions. So we'll talk some more about that as well. Okay, so I, I want to go back to this article here from um, uh, National Public Radio. When we come back from the break, Shakita, we're going to clip number one from MSNBC. Florida rejects 54 math books claiming critical race theory appeared in some now this uh is an article from uh, national public radio from april 18th 2022 so this piece goes on to say uh 12 books were rejected because of the of the um 41 percent of the 132 books were rejected 54 54 of them were rejected okay um 28 of the 54 that were rejected were rejected because uh, the Florida State Department of Education claimed that they incorporated prohibited topics or solicited strategies or unsolicited strategies, including critical race theory. Okay, the statement said. Now, 12 books were rejected because they did not meet Florida's benchmark standards. 12 books were rejected because they did not meet Florida's benchmark standards, while 14 books were rejected because they both included prohibited topics and failed to meet curriculum standards, okay? 14 books were rejected because they both included prohibited topics and failed to meet uh, curriculum standards. Now, the names of the rejected books were not included at this time when the article came out April 18th. Now, more, more of the names of these books have been uh, released, okay? Uh, some Florida Democrats voiced their opposition to the move on Twitter. State House Representative Carlos Smith on Twitter said, education, uh, at Education uh, Florida, FL, at Education Florida, just announced they're banning dozens of math textbooks they claim indoctrinate students with CRT. They claim indoctrinate students with CRT. They won't tell us what they are or what they say because it's a lie. Hashtag DeSantis has turned uh, our classrooms into political battlefields and this is just the beginning. Now, once again, I gotta go back to 2018 when Ron DeSantis was running against uh, Andrew Gillum, Andrew Gillum was running against Ron DeSantis, and I was right here on this show, and I was telling African Americans in Florida, you got to vote for um, you got to vote for Andrew Gillum and stop Ron DeSantis because I could tell Ron DeSantis was crazy. You had some woke people who said, "Oh, Andrew Gillum doesn't have a black agenda," even though Andrew Gillum's policies were much better for African Americans than Ron DeSantis. I said, Ron DeSantis has an anti-black agenda and an anti-black agenda is worse than not having a perceived black agenda. Uh, we'll deal with this on the other side of the break. Listen to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stand by, back from break in four minutes. Share this broadcast on your social media platforms. Give us a thumbs up, give us a heart, give us a like. 
let your friends know okay who we have here we've got uh let's see what we have here we got eric author sharon sunflowers brother man a mac shonda how's everybody doing okay you can uh support the african history network dollar sign the ahn show through cash app dollar sign the ahn show through cash app also through paypal paypal.me forward slash the ahn show this helps us stay on the air keep doing the research pay some of the bills Back from break in three minutes. Stand by. Back from breaking two minutes. I'm going to post the information here so you can register for our online classes also. On Saturdays, I teach I teach ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. So we deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. Half a break in one minute. On the African History Network show, we deal with current events in history and politics, education, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, relationships, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Unfortunately, many people confuse what racism is. Racism is a power structure. It was laws and policies that put us in this predicament. It's going to be laws and policies that take us out. So when you control the radius of a man or woman's thoughts, you can control the compass of his or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. We have it all on 910 AM Superstation. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 910 AM Superstation, the future radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Tuesday, May 10th, 2022, and we are live. The call in number is 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call in number. If you have a question or comment, be sure to visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can register for uh, the new online class we have that I teach on Saturdays. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Uh, this is a 10-week online history class that I teach. It's very visual. We deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. As soon as you register, you can watch class number one and class number two. Uh, we just did class two this past Saturday. Class number three is going to be Saturday, May 15th. The class is on sale, $80, regularly $130. Even after the course is over with, you can still go back and watch the entire class. So even a year from now, two years from now, you'll still have access to the full class. Okay, I want to go to uh, I want to go to clip number one here. This is from uh, MSNBC, and this was all in with Chris Hayes. Um, Amen Mohadeen was sitting in uh, for Chris Hayes. Uh, this is from April twenty first, twenty twenty. April 21st, 2022, a look inside the math textbooks rejected by Florida. Let's go to clip one, please.
One of the major Republican campaigns over the last year has been to ban whatever they deem as, quote, critical race theory in public schools. Now, of course, uh, they have been they haven't been able to point to any examples of such um, esoteric college level theory actually being taught in K through 12. But that hasn't actually stopped them from trying to weed out anything that might teach kids that racism actually exists in this country. Last week, Florida's Department of Education rejected 54 math textbooks, uh, more than 40 percent of the books that were submitted for review. Now, 28 of those were rejected because they, quote, incorporate prohibited topics or unsolicited strategies, including critical race theory. Again, these are math books for kids. In fact, the highest number of rejections were for books for kids in grades K through five, where 71 percent of the material was rejected. A Republican Florida Governor Ron DeSantis defended the decision, saying there is no room for feelings when it comes to math. Math is about getting the right answer, and we want kids to learn to think so they get the right answer. It's not about how you feel about the problem or to introduce some of these other things. It's there's a right answer and there's a wrong answer, and we want all our students getting the right answers. All right, so what exactly was in these math books that made them too dangerously touchy-feely for Governor DeSantis and Florida Republicans to be used? Uh, journalist Judd Legum and his team at the Popular Information Newsletter got their hands on some of those banned books, and Judd joins me now. Judd, it's great to have you with us. So uh, let's go through these, some of these really quickly. How many of these rejected books did you and your team read? We were able to get our hands on eight of them. Okay, and how much evidence of critical race theory did you find in those books? Nothing, absolutely nothing. And in fact, we didn't really find anything that could even arguably be close to critical race theory in any of these textbooks. So then tell us, what did you find in those math textbooks uh, that reference race that has the Republicans so, uh, so worried? Well, it's interesting, and as you mentioned, most of the textbooks that were rejected were for elementary school students. We obtained four of the rejected textbooks for elementary school students. And in all of those textbooks, we couldn't find any mention of race in any context, even just uh, in passing. Uh, in the middle school textbook that we obtained, there was only one that was rejected and we, we got our hands on it. Uh, we did find some very brief biographies in the margins of the book about famous mathematicians. And some of those mathematicians were African-American. For instance, they had a brief biography of Albert Cox, the first African-American to earn his PhD. Uh, but they had many biographies of people of all different races from different countries. Uh, so there certainly wasn't an emphasis on any particular one. Uh, in the high school text, there was an acknowledgement at times and, and this is very brief mentions, but uh, among hundreds, thousands of problems, some of the problems as part of the factual predicate for a math problem would talk about racial disparities. For instance, there was a problem that dealt with sickle cell anemia, and they discussed it how it was more prevalent in African Americans, much more prevalent than in whites. There were some other uh, problems where they did a survey about racial prejudice among different age groups, but this was all just a setup for math problems. These are math books, uh, and there wasn't any discussion of critical race theory, and there wasn't anything about racial essentialism, which is what DeSantis claimed. Um, they, they were very typical yeah. math books. And, and even more surprisingly is that Ron DeSantis said he banned a lot of these books for being too much about feelings, not enough about math. I'm just wondering, what does that even mean, that there's too much about feelings, not enough about math? Well, what happened on the right, they were very exercised about critical race theory. But as you mentioned in your intro, that's not discussed in K-12 education. So what they've decided is that social-emotional learning, SEL, is the same as critical race theory. Uh, but it's really not. Uh, it's, it's a concept that most people will be familiar with. It's about teaching kids uh, emotional skills, teaching them confidence, teaching them to get along well with others. Uh, and that's the kind of material that he used uh, in order to reject a lot of the books, particularly uh, in the, on the elementary school level. 
I know that earlier today, the uh, Florida Department of Education uh, finally gave you a few examples of what they rejected. What were they? Well, some of it was just what I was talking about, this issue of social-emotional learning, passages where they're telling kids to be kind to others, to treat other people with respect, to have confidence. Uh, other examples, uh, one of which I recognize from one of the texts that we reviewed, uh, were these high school texts where, as a predicate, uh, one of the examples, for instance, talked about a test that was given uh, about implicit bias and racial prejudice. And but really just looking at, looking at that question, not to discuss racism or anything else, just to talk about a math problem and an equation that the, that the students would then work through. And even more importantly, it's important to understand that this is just one problem of hundreds of, in some cases, thousands of problems in these, in these texts. Yeah, it started with critical race theory, and now it is spreading to math, and there's no doubt about it. If Republicans have their way, it is going to spread into other textbooks in this country. Uh, Judd Legum, thank you so much for joining us. I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you for doing uh, the good work on these books and much more. Okay, okay pause right there. Okay, so that's uh, reporter Judge uh, Judd Legum, J-U-D-D-L-E-G-U-M. That clip is from April 21st, 2022. All in with Chris Hayes, MSNBC. That's on MSNBC's YouTube channel. That was Amen Mohadeen sitting in for Chris Hayes. The name of that clip is A Look Inside the Math Textbooks Rejected by Florida. All right. Now, if we go back to the. Um, OK, so we if we go back to the article here from uh, National Public Radio. I want to go back to this for a minute and I want to look at the one from um, New York Times. Florida rejects 54 math books claiming critical race theory appeared in some. OK, now critical race theory did not appear in these textbooks. But this what 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 they've done is and we've talked about this here be, before. And you can go back to the tweet from, from uh, March 15th, uh, 2021 from um, that was from Mark. Uh, I think it's Mark Rousseau, Chris Rousseau, Chris Rousseau from march 15th 2021 it should be uh around that era area and it dealt with redefining what critical race theory is okay uh let me try to pull this up here try to pull that up on the other side of the break But they said that any any time somebody reads something in a newspaper or sees a news story and um, don't like what they're reading, they want people to automatically say, oh, that's critical race theory. OK, Rufo, Christopher Rufo. OK, March 15th, 2021. This um, this tweet right here helped to lay the uh, game plan to redefine what critical race theory is now one of the problems is i think is that the architects of critical race theory like kimberly crenshaw and others were too slow and really democrats those on the left what have you were too slow in really responding to redefining what critical race theory is and basically lying about it and you allow republicans to to change the narrative and control the narrative okay so christopher rufo r-u-f-o said the goal is to have the public read something crazy in the newspaper and immediately think critical race theory and immediately think critical race theory we have decodified the term we have decodified the term and will recodify it to annex the entire range of cultural constructions that are unpopular with Americans. So what he said, this is from March 15, 2021. I was saying back then, you got to address this. You cannot allow them to redefine what critical race theory is. You cannot allow them to control the narrative. And, and going back to September, 2020, when Donald Trump issued his uh, uh, executive order 
banning uh, critical race theory in when it came to uh, government employees and it came to training, things like this. That's where that really starts. Critical race theory is a 40 year old uh, uh, legal analysis. OK, that comes out of uh, Harvard University and it's taught in law schools, it's taught in graduate schools, things like this. OK, we'll continue this on the other side of the break. Listen to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stand by. Back from breaking four minutes. Stand by. Back from breaking three minutes. Stand by back from breaking two minutes. Stand by. Nine ten. The Superstation, Detroit's only African American talk radio. Welcome back to the African History Network show, right here on 9 10 a.m. Superstation, the future radio. Okay. Uh, so, the article I was looking for is this one right here from uh, NBC News. We've talked about it a number of times how Trump ignited the fight over critical race theory in schools, how Trump ignited the fight over critical race theory in schools. This is one of the reasons why in 2016, I was warning people about Donald Trump here on this show. And I said he had to be stopped. People thought I was playing. They thought it was just an election about one person versus another person. And I'm like, no, a presidential election is never about one person versus another person. It's about ideology, policy, and the trajectory of America. How Trump ignited the fight over critical race theory. In schools, Republican lawmakers across the country have proposed bills to ban critical race theory in K through 12 schools. Here's what that really means. OK, now this article is from May 10th, 2021. This article is from May 10th, 2021. And in it, they talk about 
what happened in September 2020. Uh, and it, it deals with conservative leaders have accused, have been accused of using the decades old academic term, critical race theory, initially intended to recognize the systemic racism inherent in American life. But Republicans have rebranded it like Christopher Rousseau have rebranded it as a catch all for anti-racism and diversity efforts. They viewed, they rebranded it as a catch all term for anti-racism and diversity efforts. What Republicans are calling critical race theory is not what critical race theory really is. They're lying. Okay. And they're using this as a, as a cultural war, as a wedge issue. And it's going to play a part in the 2022 midterm elections and in 2024 as well. The proposed policies mimic former President Donald Trump's the trader in chief, Benedict Donald, his September 2020 memo ordering the Office of Management and Budget to stop funding training on critical race theory for federal employees, calling it a, quote, propaganda effort, calling it a, quote, propaganda effort, unquote. Now, around the same time, Benedict Donald condemned the 1619 Project, a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, 2019 New York Times report led by reporter Nicole Hannah-Jones that holds America was truly founded not in 1776, but in 1619 when the first enslaved people were brought to the colonies. Educators embraced this message and began utilizing the 1619 Project and resources to teach a more holistic history of the country. Donald Trump rebuked the 1619 Project as a warped, distorted portrayal of American history. He said he wasn't familiar with the year 1619. He knew about 1492 and 1776. Now, both, of, both the memo from September 2020 from Trump dealing with the Office of Management Budget and this attack on the 1619 Project sparked the commission of the 1776 report from Donald Trump. The 1776 report meant to combat the contents of the 1619 Project. The countrywide uprisings in the wake of George Floyd's death only fueled the matter with pundits debating the nation's fraught history of racism. Thus, although President Joe Biden reversed Trump's initial ban in January of 2022, January 2021, the seed had already been planted. So when Biden took the oath of office, when he became president, he took down that BS uh, 1776 project off of whitehouse.gov and he disbanded the 1776 commission that Trump had convened. Read the rest of this article here. See, this is things that I was warning people about. And, and people just sit up and act like elections don't have consequences, have absolutely no understanding of history. Because if we understood Richard Nixon and Richard Nixon in 1968 running on the platform of law and order, and law and order was a backlash to the civil rights movement, the black power movement, affirmative action, the rebellions taking place across the country. If we understood that, we would have stopped Trump. He, he only, I mean, Trump only won Michigan by 10,704 votes. He won Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania by 78,000 votes. And then remember uh, the night that uh, 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 Trump won and then thousands of people were all out in the street marching, protesting. And I, I was watching live on TV. I said, I sure hope all, I sure hope all those people voted for Hillary Clinton. Because you should have marched behind to the polls and voted. If you didn't vote. Now, I know some people may have been 16 years old, something like that, and couldn't vote. But I'm talking about the ones that could vote. I, I sure hope you marched up behind to the polls and voted. Don't come out marching now. So if we look at this uh, article here, we're going to go to clip two here in just a second, Shakita. We look at this piece from, uh, let's go to the one from the New York Times. Florida releases review of textbooks. Florida releases Florida releases review that led to rejection of math textbooks. Now, this is from uh, Saturday, May 7th, and it was updated 
uh, Monday, May 9th. This is from uh, the New York Times. OK. And one of the things uh, I, I saw some different stories on this. Um, one of the uh, examples in a textbook that is drawing ire is when it comes to uh, equal pay for women fighting for equal pay. Uh, there was this one example here. Megan, uh, Megan Rapinoe is an American professional soccer player. We've all seen her play and captain of the OL Reign, a team in the National Women's League, uh, as well as a as well as co-captain of the U.S. Women's National Team. She has won many awards and championships, including uh, the 2019 uh, Fight for Women's World Cup in March of 2019. She and a group of 27 of her teammates filed a lawsuit against the U.S. Soccer Federation over gender discrimination as part of the team's fight for equal pay. The U.S. women's national team has been largely more successful and popular than the U.S. men's national team. The, the U.S. women's national soccer team has been largely more uh, successful and popular than the U.S. men's national soccer team. Yet, as, as of 2019, the top women's players earned only 38% of the pay their top male counterpart, counterparts earned. The top women's players earned only 38% of the pay their top male counterparts earned. Uh, so it says, number one, in 2019, the players from the men's national team earned an average of $13,166 uh, per game. How much did the average women's national team player earn per game at the time? So this is a math problem, all right? And people like Ron DeSantis have a problem with the math problem. Now, it was the equivalent of show your work to help explain to, to help explain its puzzling rejection of dozens of math textbooks. The state of Florida, uh, which was also the first state to have poll taxes in 1889, even before Mississippi had it, just just to throw that in there, let you know what you're dealing with in Florida. The state of Florida released nearly 6000 pages of reviewer comments this week and revealed an often confusing, contradictory and divisive process. A conservative activist turned textbook reviewer was on the lookout for mentions of race. Another reviewer did not seem to know that social emotional learning concepts like developing grit should be banned according to the state. A third flagged a word problem comparing salaries for male and female soccer players. Sometimes when you just tell the truth, some people really get offended when you just expose unfairness and they say, oh, you're being woke. Oh, oh, this 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 critical race theory. You you're talking about gender discrepancies. You know, you're talking about pay discrepancies amongst gender and things like this or uh, uh, pay discrepancies amongst the races. Oh, you're not supposed to talk about that. Yeah. You're just supposed to let things that are unjust. Just just let it go ahead and don't call it out and don't try to change it as part of the official review process. The state of Florida uh, assigned educators, parents, and other residents to review textbooks in part to determine whether they adhere to Florida's teaching standards for math. From simple addition in kindergarten to interpretation of graphs in high school statistics. But Governor Ron DeSantis, a Republican who's up for re-election, needs to be voted out of office, and his allies in the state legislature have also fought against what he calls quote unquote, woke indoctrination, W-O-K-E, in public schools and advanced a series of regulations and laws intended to limit how race, gender, and social emotional subjects are taught. We're going to pick this up on the other side of the break list to the African History Network show right here on 9 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. This is Central Park, Delhi Stand today. By. Back from break in four minutes. Stand by. Stand by.
All right. Back from breaking three minutes. Back from breaking one minute. Have a break in one minute. Welcome back to the African History Network show. Okay, I want to go back to this article here from uh new york times we're going to clip two here in just a minute shakita i want to go to this article here from the new york times back to it florida releases review that led to rejection of math textbooks okay this is uh from saturday may 7th updated uh monday may 9th 2022 florida releases reviews that led to rejection of math textbooks to explain it's puzzling rejection of dozens of textbooks it's 54 okay actually 54 textbooks were rejected um out of it was about 132 okay 54 textbooks were rejected the state released the state of florida released uh 6, 000, uh pages of comments revealing an often confusing and divisive process Okay, so if we go back to the article here, this part right here. So reviewers, this is from page one of the article. So reviewers were asked to flag, quote unquote, critical race theory, culturally responsive teaching, social justice as it relates to CRT, and social emotional learning according to the documents. In an illustration of how politicized and subjected those terms have become, the various reviewers seldom agreed on whether those concepts were present, and if they were, whether the book should be accepted or rejected for including them. While many states and some school districts appoint textbook reviewers, Florida's process has been highly unusual. Florida's process has been highly unusual. Some reviewers considered race and social emotional learning uh, alongside detailed points of math content and pedagogy, while others looked only for race theory according to the documents. Uh, it is not clear why particular reviewers took on a more narrow task and the Florida Department of Education did not immediately respond to a list of written questions about the review process. Now, I want to go to uh, this piece here, this uh, clip here, clip number two, 
Kita. This is from 4JAX, uh, uh, Jacksonville, Florida, uh, April 22nd, 2022. Florida's Education Department releases examples from math textbooks. Let's go to this clip, please. An update tonight about math textbooks recently rejected by the state's education department because it said they contain prohibited topics like critical race theory. Well, now we have examples of what were in those books. Tarek is joining us now with what they said. Tarek? So a total of 54 unpublished math books were rejected. Or only two equations in question have been released. In both of these examples, students are asked to interpret data showing levels of racial prejudice. This kind of math is typically taught in, taught in eighth or ninth grade algebra. These are the examples in a textbook that's been challenged by the state. Middle and high school students are asked to measure the levels of racial prejudice with various statistics they've been given shown in a bar graph. The students are asked to calculate bias using an algebra model. The varying levels are labeled as little or no bias, slight bias, or moderate bias. Governor DeSantis calls this pernicious ideology. We're here today because we believe in education, not indoctrination. Speaking in South Florida, surrounded by students carrying Stop Woke and Stop CRT signs, which stands for critical race theory, DeSantis signed the Stop Woke Act into law. The bill restricts how workplaces and classrooms handle discussions about race. Florida Education Association President Andrew Sparr says the examples the state points to are not examples of critical race theory. I don't think these are real issues. I don't think there's any evidence to really back it up. I think they're feeling pressure because everyone's going, what are you talking about critical race theory in math? Sparr says the state didn't provide any context to the math equations and says the controversy over CRT is manufactured, saying a lot of the rejected books are already being used in Florida schools. He says the biggest change is modifying them to the recently adopted Florida Best Standards. I think what we're seeing here is any time the word race is mentioned, any time the color or ethnicity of someone is mentioned uh, in a textbook, are we going to are we going to say that's a problem and that's not allowed? And are we then whitewashing history at that point? Governor DeSantis says eliminating language like this in math questions gives students freedom from indoctrination. And another thing that people will say is. There is no course called CRT in our K through 12 schools. And, you know, that is actually true that there are there are courses like that in law schools, which is really where, where it should stay. Um, but what we are doing here is actually enumerating the principles of CRT being put into practice in a whole variety of subjects. Florida Education Association President Andrew Sparr says that race is not just an issue that's embedded in our history, but he says it's an issue oftentimes in our current events as teaching about race to age-appropriate students is a requirement of Florida education. One simple okay. but brilliant. Okay, pause right there. Uh, check out this article here from uh, News4JAX, uh, News4JAX.com. Florida's Education Department releases examples from math textbooks it says contained critical race theory. Uh, and this article is from April 22nd, 2022. Uh, this is uh, the news outlet that you heard that clip from. DeSantis signs into law bill restricting how workplaces, classrooms, classrooms handle discussions about race. Uh, and in the article, it talks, it, it gives an example. Two math equations were released from two of 54 math textbooks that were rejected by the state's education department. In both of these examples, students are asked to interpret data showing uh, levels of racial prejudice. This kind of math is typically taught in eighth or ninth grade algebra. Uh, the students are asked to calculate bias using an algebra model. The varying levels are la labeled little or no bias, slight bias or moderate bias, okay? Now, um, it goes on to say, say let's see here governor ron DeSantis said eliminating language like this in math questions gives students freedom from indoctrination um okay so you can read the rest of this and Tariq minor uh wrote this article you heard him here in the clip also uh he's african-american florida education department releases examples from math textbooks it says contain critical race theory once again, this is the reason why 
uh, who you vote for governor is important when you have somebody crazy like Ron DeSantis in office who's who's uh Donald Trump lackey pushing this right wing white supremacist ideology all right this is what happens this is why who you vote for uh state legislature is so important as well okay all right now uh we're out of we run out of time here on that 10 a.m superstation wfdf i want to go to um also check out the article from the washington post those watching on facebook and youtube keep watching we're going to keep going for a few more minutes we're going to talk about the murder of, of uh, reverend george uh, uh george w lee he was a civil rights activist murdered may 7th 1955 mississippi read this article here from the washington post desantis accused textbooks of indoctrination here's what he meant santa's accused textbooks of indoctrination here's what he meant uh this is from uh monday may 9th 2022 i sure wish they would i sure wish washington post had put the dates on all these articles don't say yesterday um and they show some of the uh i think they have one of the uh, uh math problems in here as well okay all right Thanks for tuning in to the After History Network show. Remember, right now is correct. Wrong behavior is not over till we win. We're kind of forever. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. All right, stand by. Okay, if you like this type of information, you can support the After History Network. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the ahn show the socials keep doing the research and uh keep broadcasting uh we'll post we'll post the link here as well and be sure to register for the online history classes i teach on saturdays and sundays uh ancient kemet the moors and the ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade what they didn't teach you in school and from the civil war to the civil rights movement and black power 1865 to 1968 i teach that one on sunday we have class number one starting up this sunday um which is uh this sunday may 15th and then uh understand the transatlantic slave trade will be uh, uh saturday may 14th okay so we've got that right there all right i want to go to this uh, story here from the zen education project and this is dealing with um, the murder of civil rights activist, uh, Reverend George Lee. Let me pull this up. 1955 in Mississippi. So we talked about this on the show before, but it's, a, it's an important uh, topic. All right, this is from the Zen Education Project. May 7th, 1955, murder of Reverend George W. Lee. Here's a picture of him also. Reverend George W. Lee, one of the first African Americans uh, registered to vote uh, in Humphreys County, Mississippi, since Reconstruction. We know Reconstruction ended in 1877. He's one of the first African Americans to register to vote in Humphreys County, uh, Mississippi, since Reconstruction ended. He used his pulpit and his printing press to urge uh, others to vote. Now, Reverend George W. Lee was head of the Bel uh, Belzoni, Mississippi chapter of the NAACP. After countless threats, and let's see if we can increase the size of this here. After countless threats against his life and demands that he remove his name from the voting rolls, Reverend Lee was murdered on May 7th, 1955. Uh, History News Network reports in the grim and over overlooked anniversary of the murder of civil rights activist, the Reverend George W. Lee. They said in April 1955, 
Reverend Lee was one of the speakers at the council's uh, annual meeting, which drew a crowd of more than 7,000 to the all black town of Mound Bayou, Mississippi. Now, ba Mound Bayou, Mississippi was founded by a trader named Isaiah T. Montgomery, who at the Mississippi State Convention in 1890, he was the only African American there, and he voted along with the white supremacists to impose poll taxes and literacy tests on African Americans. They were trying to suppress the African American vote. Solomon Saladin Calhoun, the white county judge who presided over the uh, Mississippi State Convention, he said, we came here to exclude the Negro. We came here to exclude the Negro. Okay. And they wanted to suppress the African-American vote and po impose poll taxes and literacy tests. Uh, so uh, to make it much harder for us to vote and vote the African-American elected officials out of office in the state of Mississippi. And this became known as the Mississippi Plan, which was adopted by other southern states, former Confederate states, to, to do the same thing. OK. And uh, Isaiah T. Montgomery. And they have a picture of him here in this article. He's a former slave. Uh, and he was he was a, a wealthy businessman, landowner. Uh, he be, he became the founder of Bayou, uh, the city of Bayou, Mississippi, and the city's mayor also. But he was a traitor as well. The only African American delegate delegate Isaiah T. Montgomery supported these requirements: the poll taxes, literacy tests, things like this. The convention, the Mississippi State Convention, also adopted a two dollar poll tax equal to about fifty eight dollars a day that disproportionately eliminated African American voters, most of whom were very poor meaning that you had to pay this $2 poll tax to, to, to register to vote, okay? And Isaiah T. Montgomery supported the requirements. Now, I'm not sure if Isaiah T. Montgomery is related to Senator Tim Scott from South Carolina, Black Tea Party Republican, who voted against Ketanji Brown Jackson, who blocked the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act during the uh, negotiations between Senator Cory Booker, Representative Karen Bass, and uh, Senator Tim Scott was negotiating on behalf of the republicans in bad faith he was negotiating in bad faith and uh he blocked the negotiations and 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 uh came out and said oh the, in september 2021 oh the sticking point was over defund the police but the uh, uh fraternal order police and the in the uh uh, international organization of police chiefs put out a joint statement and said that they supported the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act and that the bill did not defund the police. It actually spent, uh, it allocated more money to policing. Okay. So people who say they're for defund the police, but they want the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, apparently you haven't read the bill. The George Floyd Justice and Policing Act spends millions of dollars more on policing. It doesn't defund the police. That's not me saying that. That's Senator Cory Booker saying that who helped write the bill. But he spends the money more responsibly on policing. And this is what people miss when they just deal with like hashtag uh, politics. Okay, now we go back to this here. Uh, Isaiah T. Montgomery had been enslaved by the brother of Confederate President Jefferson Davis of Mississippi. Montgomery, an educated and successful African-American businessman, said that Mississippi's uneducated uh, uneducated African-Americans would approve of the restrictions for the good of the state. So he's saying that African-Americans in the state of Mississippi would approve of these poll taxes to suppress the African-American vote for the good of the state of good old Mississippi. Uh, Nina Simone wrote a song about Mississippi also. I may listen to that tonight on YouTube. Uh, Montgomery's optimistic view was that African-Americans would be treated equally as their education level rose. Quote, the two great races shall peaceably travel side by side, each mutually assisting the other to mount higher. End quote. He declared in a nationally publicized speech at the convention. He's a brain damaged Negro. This is a picture of him. Isaiah T. Montgomery. Now, at least his actions, at least he can say he's a former slave. That explains why he's brain damaged. What's Senator Tim Scott's excuse? 
At least Isaiah T. Montgomery could say he used to be a slave. Okay, what's Senator Tim Scott's excuse? Revered black abolitionist Frederick Douglass said Isaiah T. Montgomery, quote, commits unconscionable treason to his race and surrendering his franchise. This Frederick Douglass uh, eviscerated him. He said of Isaiah T. Montgomery, he, quote, commits unconscionable treason to his race and surrendering his franchise, end quote. Now, earlier, African-Americans from 40 counties in Mississippi have protested to President, President Benjamin Harrison, but President Benjamin Harrison declined to intervene. The convention adopted the Constitution on November 1st, 1890, November 1st, 1890, adding the new requirements to a provision allowing voting by male residents aged 21 and older, quote, except idiots, insane persons, and Indians not taxed, end quote. Okay? When they talk about idiots and insane persons, that's half of the GOP today. Read the rest of this article. Um... It goes on to say, when Northern newspapers denounced the literacy test as discriminatory, one Mississippi state uh, senator responded, quote, I deny that the educational test was intended to exclude Negroes from voting. The sole purpose was to exclude persons from uh, of both races who from who, who from want of intelligence are unsafe depositors of political power. But is going to dis the poll taxes disproportionately suppress the African American vote. They disproportionately in the poll, especially the literacy test, because they will make exceptions oftentimes for white people, illiterate white people, when it came to enforcing the literacy test, but not for us. They would enforce it for us. That more, he, he goes on to say, that more Negroes would be excluded is true, but it's not our fault. OK, so he's sounded like myst mystical. You know, it ain't my fault. All right. Did I do that? Like Steve Urkel, did I do that? Well, they did this on purpose. Solomon Saladin Calhoun said we're here to exclude the Negro. And they and, and they did it in a way to get around the 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Then in the 1898 uh, uh, Supreme Court case, Williams versus Mississippi, challenging the poll taxes and literacy tests. The U.S. Supreme Court rules that it does not violate the 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution to have poll taxes and literacy tests. OK, now, so this is some of the history leading up to Reverend George Lee being murdered. They rewrite the state constitution in Mississippi to suppress the African-American vote in, in, in at the same time. Uh, in 1890, African Americans were the majority of the voters in Mississippi. Okay, as a result of slavery, African Americans were the majority of the voters in Mississippi. And you know, up until 1910, about 90 percent of African Americans lived in the South. Delegates eventually adopted a literacy test and poll tax geared to suppress the black vote in a state with a black majority. We would, we would, we would the majority of the population. In, in the state of Mississippi. Okay, now if we go to uh, this one here. So we deal with a lot of this in the second class that I teach from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement to Black Power, 1865 to 1968. I teach that on Sundays, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Okay, let's see here. Let's uh, okay. Let's go back to this one here. In class number one is going to be uh, Sunday, May fifteenth. Okay, so in April of uh, nineteen fifty-five, uh, Reverend George W. Lee was one of the speakers at the council's annual meeting, which drew a crowd of more than 7,000 to the all black town of Mound Bayou. Simon, Simeon Booker of Jet Magazine observed how Reverend George W. Lee's quote down home dialogue and his uh, sense of political timing had electrified the crowd. 
quote, pray not for your mom and pop, Reverend Lee suggested. They've gone to heaven. Pray you can make it through this hail. He said, pray not for your mom and pop. They've gone to heaven. Pray you can make it through this hail. That's what living in Mississippi was like. Living in the South, but especially Mississippi. Less than a month after the speech, after the speech on May 7th, 1955, a convertible pulled up alongside Reverend Lee's car just before midnight, just before midnight. An unidentified uh, um, assailant fired three shotgun blasts, shattering Reverend George W. Lee's jaw and driving him off the road, driving him off the road. Reverend Lee died before he could make it to the hospital. The attack came days after he had received a threatening note demanding that he drop his name from the voting rolls, okay? The attack came days after he had received a threatening note demanding that he drop his name from the voting rolls. An autopsy extracted lead pellets from his face that were consistent with buckshot. The sheriff who wanted to call it a traffic accident and closed the case, claimed that they were dental fillings torn loose by the impact of the crash, not pellets because his jaw was blown off by a shotgun blast. The sheriff, who wanted to call uh, the killing of Reverend Lee a traffic accident and closed the case, claimed that the lead pellets were dental fillings, de dental fillings torn loose by the impact of the crash. Now, I haven't heard of dental fillings being torn loose by the impact of a crash. I mean, I guess out of what the crashes in the past 50 years, I guess is, is possible, but that's not really probable. Um, now, Reverend Lee was a savvy business man he exemplified an early generation of activists who solidified successful businesses and then used this as a launching pad for community activism as the pastor of a baptist church an operator of a printing press and an active member of the naacp reverend george w lee uh made his mark on the community once referred to as bloody Bel Bel uh, belzani Okay, Bl Bloody Belzani, Mississippi. He was also the first African American to register to vote since Reconstruction in Humphreys County, Mississippi, where African Americans were a majority of the population. Okay, but no, but none of them were registered to vote. African Americans were a majority of the population in Humphreys County, Mississippi, as well as probably Mississippi, even still, still at that time, majority population. But in that county, no African-Americans were registered to vote. In 1953, Reverend Lee and Gus Quartz, C-O-U-R-T-S, co-founded the Bel uh, Belzoni uh, branch of the NAACP. As early as 1954, uh, Reverend Lee was heavily involved in the local voting re voter registration drives, working alongside uh, Gus Quartz, who was elected NAACP president, they successfully registered 92 African-American voters. Both uh, Gus Quartz and Reverend Lee also ran small grocery stores. They also ran small grocery stores. So they were able, because they were entrepreneurs, because they owned businesses, they were able to leverage that, okay, and, and build that econ economic foundation to propel them into politics all right and registering people to vote things like this they work for white people so they didn't have to worry about being fired from their job okay so it's just like if you go and study um 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 fanny lou hamer and they have a picture they have a picture of reverend lee uh laying in the casket this is from jet magazine with his jaw blown off um Fannie Lou Hamer from Mississippi, youngest of 20 children. She worked 
uh, she picked cotton on the plantation uh, and her whole family uh, picked cotton, okay, on this plantation. When she registered to vote, she was fired from her job on the plantation just for re not for voting, just for registering to vote in Mississippi. After years of attempts, both Gus Quartz and Reverend Lee were allowed to pay poll taxes and sign the register once the county sheriff feared federal prosecution. Now, George Lee also served as the vice president of the Regional uh, Council of, of Negro Leadership, a leading black organization advocating a message of self-help, business, and civil rights. Okay, the Regional Council of Negro Leadership, a leading uh, black organization advocating a message of self-help, business and civil rights. Now, it was headed by Dr. T.R.M. Howard. Now, November uh, 27th, 1955, Dr. T.R.M. Howard is going to uh, uh, speak at a speech. He's going to speak at a church and. Rosa Parks is going to attend that speech, and the and the and the rally is about the killing of Emmett Till, who was killed August 28, 1955. And Rosa Parks talks about how uh when she refused to give up her seat on that Cleveland Avenue bus, uh December uh 1st, 1955, she was thinking about Emmett Till because just a few days prior she had attended this uh meeting at the church. And Dr. T.R.M. Howard spoke there, and, and, and the meeting was about Emmett Till, uh, Emmett Till's killing. Okay. There's a uh, article also from the Zen Education Project we've talked about before. And Emmett Till really, the, the killing of Emmett Till really helps to uh, launch the modern day civil rights movement, even though you have Brown versus Board of Education already, but it really helped to launch the modern day civil rights movement. And it was uh, members of the NAACP, like uh, uh, Megger Evers, who helped gather evidence and gather witnesses to testify in the uh, testify in the trial. So there was a. Let me see if we can pull this up. Uh, this is okay. November twenty seventh, nineteen fifty five. Rosa Parks attends meeting about Emmett Till. This is from the Zen Education Project also. November 27, 1955, Rosa Parks attends meeting about Emmett Till. And you see uh, Dr. T.R.M. Howard you see a picture of him here. He has he's wearing the glasses, has the suit on. On November 27, 1955, Rosa Parks attended a packed mass meeting at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church uh, to hear. So that's the same church that um, uh, Dr. King uh, preached at as well, was a minister at in um, uh, Montgomery, Alabama, Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. Uh, a pat attended a packed mass meeting at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church to hear Dr. T.R.M. Howard speak. Dr. Howard was the lead organizer in the Emmett Till case of the 14-year-old Chicago boy who had been tortured and murdered near Money, Mississippi. Four days later, when bus driver James Blake, B-L-A-K-E, told Rosa Parks to give up her seat, quote, pushed as far as she could be pushed, end quote, she refused. OK, and uh, they have an excerpt from uh, Rosa Parks biography, uh, Rosa Parks biography website. Uh, and she talks about um, it's in one of the quotes. She talks about thinking about Emmett Teal. All right. Many years later, she told Emmett Till's mother that she had thought of him at this moment. OK, uh, when she refused to give up her seat on the bus. So read this article here from. Uh, the Zen Education Project, November 27th, 1955, 
Rosa Parks attends meeting about Emmett Till. Because Rosa Parks was, she, um, for the NAACP, she wasn't just a secretary. She also investigated sexual assaults of, um, like when African Americans were accused of sexual, African American men, especially accused of sexual assaults on white women, she investigated that. And she also investigated the gang rape of Reese Taylor. Okay. So you can read more about that. Now, if we go back quickly here to this one here, uh, this article on uh, George W. Lee. George, uh, George Lee also served as the vice president of the Regional Council of. Uh, Negro Leadership, a leading black organization advocating a mess self-help business and civil rights headed by Dr. D by Dr. T.R.M. Howard, one of the wealthiest uh, black people in the state of Mississippi. The Regional Council of Negro Leadership staged a successful boycott of gas stations that refused to install restrooms for African-Americans. Megger Evers worked as an organizer. In response to their voter registration efforts, uh, Reverend George W. Lee and Gus Quartz soon became prime targets of the uh, Belzani Citizens Council, which is like the White Citizens Council. Refusing to bow down to intimidation, Reverend Lee once refused an offer of protection extended by white officials on the condition that he cease his voter registration efforts. Similarly, Gus Quartz was ordered by his banker to turn over all NAACP books or leave town. He was uh, ordered by his banker to turn over all NAACP books or leave town. Gus Quartz stood his ground and went on to testify before a congressional committee about voter intimidation by the Citizens Council and his experiences. One of the people sent to investigate his murder was uh, George W. Uh, 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 Reverend George W. Lee. One of the people sent to investigate his murder was Megger Evers, who was also murdered in Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi, June 12, 1963, by Byron Della Beckwith, who was a member of the White Citizens Council. Now, Reverend Lee's widow, Rosebud Lee was her name, decided to hold an open coffin ceremony for her late husband. The decision planted the seeds for a similar decision by Mamie Till Mobley, maybe Till Mobley, Emmett Till's mother. Uh, they have a, also a documentary here that you can watch on Reverend George W. Lee as well. Okay. Uh, by Keith Bochamp, Bochamp. And, um, uh, Uh, it's called Reverend George Lee Case. Uh, it, it appears as the name of the uh, documentary. So check that out also. Okay, you can read this article. May 7th, 1955, murder of Reverend George W. Lee. Okay, look, we have to get out of here. Um, if you'd like to type for information, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show. Through Cash App, through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. We have the information also at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, so it's right on the home page. And when you go to it, it says, uh, when you go to our Cash App account, our tag is dollar sign, the AHN show, S H O W. It'll say Michael and show my picture there. These other ones here are fake African History Network Cash App accounts. We also have the link here and the yellow PayPal donate button. You can also order the uh, new documentary from director Amadeus Christ, uh, Heavy is the Crown, um, and this deals with the African origins of major religions. It features Professor uh, James Small, Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene, two of my teachers, also Tony Browder, uh, David Banner, and others. So, and you get uh, one of my lectures free uh, when you uh, order this documentary. We also have a um, a bundle pack where you get four of my lectures and you get enrolled in uh, the 10 week online class, Ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. 
uh let me see here we'll post the link here for heavy is the crown also You post this here. All right, right here. For heavy is the crown. Okay, there we go. Okay, look, we have to get out of here. Remember it, remember the African History Network, you focus on educating and empowering and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace.